Good afternoon everyone. I am Albert and I am an amateur photographer uh, who owns an XE4 with a 35mm f2 lens. So today I will talk to you um, about the 35mm f2. Uh, there have been a lot of reviews on YouTube about the 35mm f2 and this is just how I feel about the lens which is a little bit different from what others feel about it. Okay, to cut to the chase, what is this lens not suitable for? First, if you have been spending years using your smartphone camera to take photos of food, you do a lot of food photography, I'm sure you realize that whatever smartphones you use, you can go very close to the subject and you can get quite good food shots if the lighting is correct. Bear in mind, with the 35mm f2, you cannot go too close because the minimum focusing distance is about 1.2 feet. So if you are trying to take a photo of, let's say, a plate of pasta in front of you, you can't just hold it and take a shot like that. Most of the time, it won't work out. You have to really back up. And if that is a problem to you, then you need to consider if you take a lot of this type of shots, such as what you see here. So, if you also use a lot of wide angle uh, lenses before and you are used to using wide angle lenses and you have not tried a 50mm full frame equivalent lens, which is this 35, you might need some time to get used to it. So you have to ask yourself, is the 35mm f2 or any 35mm lens for APS-C camera which is equivalent to 50mm, is it suitable for you? Are you used to that kind of focal length and the kind of photos that you take? Do you need that 50mm uh, focal length based on a lot of photos that you have? captured in the past. I suggest that you go through those photos and don't look at what others are doing on YouTube. Look at your photos and ask yourself, do you need or did you need, you know, did you feel that you need a 50mm to take that kind of shot? Because many might find that the 50mm focal length is actually too constrained and they need a lot of time to get used to it. So before you jump into buying this lens, you have to bear that in mind. The third thing is street photography. If you look at some of these shots, they were taken uh, with a smartphone, all right? And as you know, most smartphones come with wide focal length uh, lenses. Why? I think because they know that a wide focal length lens is much more um, practical for daily use. Anybody who is not a photography expert can use a wider focal length lens found in most smartphones to take respectable or even great photos. And that's good. That is good. If you are used to doing that and you've been capturing a lot of street photos, good ones, that's fine. But when you jump into a 35mm lens, which is 50mm full frame equivalent, the ball game is different. Your composition will need to be different. It forces you to think in a different way. You can't just lift it up and just nonchalantly and easily just shoot, just snap everything like before. It won't work anymore. You have to really think of how you want to compose the shot before you get into it. Such as some of these shots here. And lastly, you have to look at the price of this lens. This is roughly about $400, 400 to 450 US. It is not an expensive lens. It is not a technically perfect lens, but it is an artistically pleasing lens, which is practical and it gives good value for money. The build quality is wonderful. Full anodized aluminum construction, uh, very uh, solid. Uh, aperture ring firm 
nothing to complain at all about its construction. It is very small, very compact and it suits cameras such as the XE4 and the XE series very well, even X-Pro3 and other cameras. So if you need a lens which is aesthetically pleasing and it's very compact, lightweight, easy to manage, you know, will not take up too much space and will not cause your camera to go out of balance, you should consider the 35mm f2. And there have been a lot of uh, reports saying about um, purple color fringing, chromatic aberration. Well, look at the shots here. You see, look at the shots. Most of you would probably be using some sort of uh, Fuji film simulation, which already has changed the color because you have manipulated reality into this reality when you use any of the film simulations. So, uh, you know, you are not taking a shot without anything at all. It is, not a, it is not an empty shot, for example, a shot that you can get from any other camera where you will be, you know, you'll be very uh, critical about chromatic aberration or some other kind of um, funny things going on. Most of the Fujifilm users or the newer Fujifilm users will be using film simulations and by that you have already changed the color. So whether the lens produces great colors or not, in my opinion, is not critical anymore. And one last point about this lens is it is weather sealed. So if your Fuji body is also weather sealed, this lens is a perfect accompaniment for that particular body. And overall, I have no complaints about this lens. I bought this lens with my own money. I did not loan it from any third party. And I'm not just, uh, you know, pasting affiliate links to my YouTube video. You won't see any affiliate links here. So I'm not asking you to buy it because whether you buy it or you don't buy it, I don't, I mean, it doesn't affect me. I'm just trying to tell you what I feel about this lens after using it for about one month and I use it like um, once every two days and so far I have no reason to complain about it. I just have to be cautious about close uh, shooting. That is something that you really need to remember. Close shooting, the um, uh, depth of field is very limited. So if you are used to using smartphone cameras to do most of your shooting previously, or you have been using like 16 millimeter, 18 millimeter, 23 to do a lot of your close up foot shots and things like that, you have to bear in mind the characteristic of this lens and you will be fine. The autofocus ability of the 35 millimeter F2 is fantastic. It focuses very quickly it is very silent and when paired with the XE4, I have no issues whatsoever with the autofocusing uh, abilities. And the last point is, what was the single motivating factor that made me buy this lens? It's very simple. I wanted this specific focal length because there are no smartphones that I know of that can give me this type of visual signature in a genuine optical way because as we all know uh, most smartphones they have this uh, portrait format for a uh, portrait feature but it is actually based on computational photography where a lot of it is actually based on processing so the effect is a little bit fake and it works well only under bright sunlight and for certain subjects what I want is that real 50mm uh, full frame look and I find it very useful for certain types of food photography. Of course, again, there must be a respectable distance. And for street photography, as you can see here, and also for uh, portraits. I, I, I don't do a lot of portraits uh, once in a while and this lens, it is I would say a multi-purpose lens, but you have to be careful with the composition. It forces you to rethink how you want to compose your shots. So it will create a new dimension in your adventure in photography. It will give you a new look. It will make you think out of your old box. 
and that is another reason why I like this focal length because I want to go into another area, another unexplored area in my photography trip. You know, instead of always using wider angle lenses, I want something of this focal length. I want to exercise my power perception. I want to exercise my ability to think differently in terms of composition. So if you like this sort of thing, then I strongly suggest that you give this 35mm f2 a try. It might just float your boat. Thank you.